Welcome to the Top of the Morning Show. It's your girl Titi from the D. It is Thursday morning and I hope that you are off to a great start. For those of you that are logging on right when we get started, it's 6 a.m. somewhere in the world. And for those of you that's coming on a little bit later through the day, happy Thursday to you. I want to recognize that we have listeners across the globe. So, you could be in Australia, you could be in Jamaica, Italy, Canada, Vietnam, Laos, you could be in Bahrain, you can be in Nova Scotia. And I say these places because these are places that I know according to my analytics that I have listeners. And of course, you could be right here in the United States and still be a couple hours ahead of us or behind us. And I just want to say thank you for tuning in and checking us out this morning. This morning's topic is quite interesting. We've said it. We've heard it. Do we understand it for what it really is? Maybe. Timing is everything. Or is it? That statement Time and is everything has been used widely, loosely, since I was a child, around the globe. It's used by people who are waiting on something to happen and they are standing on faith. It's used by people who are frustrated and try to figure things out and justify what certain things are happening. It kind of parallels with the saying that God's time is not our time and our time is not God's time. Whether we want to admit it or not, timing has troubled us in some fashion or form, right? It's one thing when you're looking at the clock and it's five o'clock, right? Hypothetically. And things are just dragging, dragging, dragging. And you're like, this day is just lasting forever. And then you look back and it's five old. Five, and you're like, oh my god, it's been five minutes. You felt like it was five hours, right? I know I can't be the only one that has felt that way. Either way, you think about it, something that could have been done right at that moment, right at that second, was put off because you waited on time. Some people even reference it as father time. I never understood that. Like, why they never said mother time? Why they say, oh, father time? I'm like, it's rhetorical. Like, why Why wasn't it mother's time? Now, I feel that timing is everything. I do. I touch and agree with that. I don't complain about it. I just believe it. Okay? And I'm going to share a few ways that we can really look at that to make some sense of it. However, I have to tell you, you have to appreciate the natural rhythm of life because life goes day to day. There are no redos. There are no takeovers. There are no makeovers. Even if you were sitting in a classroom taking a test and then they said, okay, that's it for today. Close your booklet up and we'll finish this on tomorrow. You could glance back over, but you already submitted your answers. What's been done has been done. You can't go back and take it away, right? Nevertheless, I'm still going to give you a few pointers so that you can help orchestrate the time in your life. If you are a believer that time is everything. Number one, be patient. My friends, recognize that everything happens in a preferred schedule. Sometimes we don't want to be patient, but yet all the time we have to be patient and allow things to manifest and allow it to unfold. People, let out prime example, this true story. I was scheduled to have a C-section with my second son. Had it all planned out. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this on this date. Went in, got all, yep, everything is good. Cool. The day, the night of his baby shower, I started getting contractions. Well, I really thought they were what Jay called Braxton Hicks. I'm like, oh, I know I'm not going to labor. These got to be those Braxton Braxton Hicks because I'm scheduled to have this baby on whatever the date was, right? But Cody decided, oh, I'm coming on 
February 21st. I couldn't allow time to be kept. Timing was everything. It was time to go. There was no, well, we're going to just kind of ignore your contractions and we'll just wait. No, we had to move and we had to move swiftly, right? We have to take a pause for the cause. We have to take a moment to breathe, reset, regroup, redo sometimes. Because you can't stop what's going to happen inevitably. You cannot. I don't care what you do. You cannot stop. I couldn't stop Cody from trying to come into this world. He was ready to come. I had other plans. My time was not according to his time. And God's time was attached to his time. That's what I believe, right? Number two, take some time, but not forever to make a decision. Woo, baby. Now, you talking about exercising patience? Now, I, I say that I agree with this because a lot of times people... You probably could talk to any man, woman, boy, or girl that's locked up. And they would say, if I had took my time and didn't act on impulse, making hasty decisions, I probably would be a free man, woman, boy, or girl. Right? Because when we tend to work and act out of frustration or impulse, we gather less data and we We utilize assumptions. Now, this can always lead to you living a life with a regret or full of regrets. Right? However, don't take time for granted because it's not promised. I know you heard that cliche saying, true, time is not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. I hope to see tomorrow that's the plan but I said I was going to do a show on this topic before unfinished business whenever somebody passes away there's always some things they were getting ready to do or they didn't finish doing hell I know somebody who didn't even get to cut their car off left it running because it was going to run in and out They didn't know their life was going to be taken when they ran in. But it was. Number three, listen to your gut and not your heart. Pay attention to your intuition. That gut feeling. Something telling you, like, don't do it. And we always question, and what? I wonder what that is. Our intuition. Our instincts. They will guide you to the right time of things and help you to truly avoid situations that sometimes you may not come back from. And I'm a living witness of that. That's a whole nother podcast too. That was my testimony and my story. That has happened in my past. And I thank God that I was obedient because I'm still here to talk about it. Right? If there's something that doesn't feel right and it don't jump with you, it don't move with your rhythm, don't do it. Wait a while. Right? Intuition helps us to sense vibrations that the universe can make you see with the naked eye if you take a time or you take the time to slow down. And a lot of times we are go, 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 go. We want microwave moments and that's not what it's about. Number four, understand the season of life. Oh, seasons. You probably get this. From, you know, other people, you've heard it, and it might sound different, right? The way I'm breaking it down, but you got to understand that life has seasons, just like nature does. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Yesterday was the first day of spring, allegedly, but here in the D, it felt like the first day of fall. It started snowing, then the sun came out. I'm like, whoa, we need an IEP for the weather here in Michigan, for real. This fall may not be the season for you. This spring may not be the season for you. This summer may not be the season for you. This winter may not be the season for you. But we have to learn to reflect. Right? We need to reflect. Because with reflection, you will see growth. And sometimes it might take you longer than a season. And when I reference a season, a season that we seasonally deal with, winter, spring, summer, fall, it might take you a whole full year. You got to go through the seasons. So now you got to add the S on. 
because you got to shift some things. You got to pivot. You'll know when your season come. You'll get that inkling, but you'll definitely know. Number five, reset your clock as often as you want to. You might be like, what? How? Yeah. Adaptable. Be adaptable. Be open and change. Some people are so, I ain't changing. I ain't doing this. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to. Too bad. It's like, wow. Wow. Really? Really? Life is full of change. Full of unexpected twists, turns, and events like a roller coaster ride. Either you're going to ride that boy and have fun. You're going to ride that boy and be nervous. Or you're going to ride that boy and have no feelings. You got to learn to adjust as the plan goes. And we don't always have a blueprint. We don't always have seeds to say, okay, this is going to happen at this time, precise time. But it don't always work like that. And this is something I learned pretty early in my life. I didn't really understand it, but I had to sort it out as I started getting older and walking a different path from the one in which I was walking before I understood. Because you know that old saying, when you know better, you do better, right? However, let me throw a spinner in here. Remember that life rarely follows the path in which you choose. Think back to some of the most fond memories you have in your life, right? Now, how many of those memories were planned and executed according to the way it started out? What about the spontaneous road trips, the chance meetings, the sudden opportunities? Mm-hmm. Some you may even forgot about and now you're, you're thinking like, wow, oh, I remember it just happened. Like, do you believe in coincidences? That's rhetorical. You either do or you don't. Or you could be on the fence about it. You got to remember that unexpected moments often challenge us too. Sometimes we push to the limit. We have to adjust ourselves to the rhythm of the earth. The way that we are chasing time we give up so much of ourselves by chasing time we don't even realize how much of a blessing it is to just get another day another opportunity now some people understand what that looks like and some do not and that's okay because if God grants you another opportunity another opportunity to say you know what let me look at that let me let me I'm, I, I'm, I'm seeing something different then you run with that. You run with it and you run fast with it. Now, one thing I can say that I, I, I really believe is that God don't, he don't um, get any take backs. <laughs> what does that mean, TT? I don't think he takes back the day. Oh, I'm going to let you live today. Oh, no, no, you lived a little bit, but I'm. A, he can't take it back. He can't take back the day, but you can. You can. You can take back the day. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do something a little different and make that thing happen. Make it happen for yourself. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Why ask why? Well, why ask why? Why ask why? Well, that's all I got for you on this thankful Thursday morning. It's a beautiful day. I'm excited for this weekend. I'm planning to have a great weekend with my husband. And uh, I hope the weather treats us well. We're going to do some things we haven't done before. So a few things we've done and we find it quite eventful. So we'll follow suit, but a few things we haven't done. And so we're going to look into that. Whatever you choose to do, I hope that you do it well and you do it with cheer in your heart. Remember, you can catch us Monday through Friday right here on the Top of the Morning Show. I'm going to have a great lineup next week. We're going to be preparing to introduce you guys to what did you expect? That's going to be introduced on Mondays, right? We're going to unpack the book by Paul Tripp. It's an amazing book. It's really for the people that are married or getting ready to get married, right? It's really a good book. And then I'm going to have the beautiful Tanya Michelle on Tap In Tuesday next week. It's going to be an amazing show. Tomorrow, you got to tap in at 6 a.m. to catch out the hot topic because it's free flow Friday. Okay. 
That's all I have. I'll see you soon.